Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to viewers and listeners wherever you are in the world. Right now, you are tuned in to Hellblazer Biz with your host, me, Chris Gordon. And it's been a while, but I'm back. <laughs> and I've got a fantastic interview for you today. This is an actress, a director, a producer, heroine of the modern day working woman. Uh, having to flee from the uh, to the US from her home country of El Salvador when she was eight years old. She settled with her parents in Sacramento, California, with the hopes of living the American dream, and that is what she is doing. And she became, she grew up to be a model student. Anyway, without further ado, I'm going to be talking to you, Armida Lopez, about her role in Boss Level, alongside Mel Gibson and Naomi Watts, and a lot more. Introducing Armida Lopez. <laughs> Everyone, I have the absolute privilege and delight of the company of Armida Lopez, uh, who's joining me all the way over from California. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I really appreciate this. Obviously, uh, I know I've been in touch with through your publicists to with your latest role, which is in Boss Level as well, which is a, a no mean feat with Mel Gibson and Naomi Watts, which is pretty cool. <laughs> I was so blessed to be able to work alongside with them. They're just, I grew up watching them, so, you know. Oh yeah, definitely, definitely. And I mean, it's not just that. I mean, you are, you know, you you're an actress. Really, your your dog's obviously really jealous now. <laughs> really jealous. I mean, like, let me get him so you can. Because, oh, okay, yeah, please. Yeah, let me. Because if not, he's gonna be barking. <laughs> okay, come on, buddy. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I have to get him or he'll keep barking the whole time. <laughs> Come on, guys. Let's go. We're going to leave. Come on. Come on. Come here. Okay. Come on, guys. I'm going to go. Come on. Let's go. Come on. No problem. Okay. Now you can... <laughs> oh, see, look at is, that. <laughs> this is him. So you can... See, this is what I have to deal with. This <laughs> devil. Oh, he's gorgeous. He's a Tasmanian devil, let me tell you. <laughs> like, a lot of bark comes out of that little thing. Oh, yeah. <laughs> he just looked like a... Like he could be a complete handful. <laughs> yes. He's so cute. And everyone's like, he's so cute. And I'm like, until he's not... Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I did, yeah. <laughs> it went a bit silent. Yeah, exactly. They're, they're very cute until until they, they're not. They're not. <laughs> we've, got a, yes. we've got a kitten like that as well. He's about seven, eight months old now, and he is adorable, and he sleeps upside down, stretched out, but when he wakes up, he's... Yeah, he, and like you say, Tasmanian devil. You just see a black and white blur around the house. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I'm like, <laughs> you're possessed. No, just <laughs> yeah. But yeah, anyway, he should be fine now because he's... He's getting you know, attention. Yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Lovely. I say, so you're not just an actress, you are a producer and a director, and obviously you've created your own film as well, which is Minutes, Hours, Days, which I got wrong on the tweet. I put it the other way around. <laughs> no, it's okay. That, that was my very first one mm -hmm. um, documentary. Um, minutes, hours, days about Hurricane Maria. Okay. And thank you for bringing that up. But yeah, like, um, you know, I act and that's my first love, but I, I think storytelling too is the second love. And I think, you know, as an actor, you're always trying to find ways to get better and create and, you know, just, you know, get behind the camera too, not just in front. And, um, and then I just created actually one called Made in America. Yep. <laughs> that is my latest, latest, uh, AD 
and um, I'm really excited about that one. Cool. What's that one about? If you can so that one me. is, an, yeah, of course. <laughs> that one's an immigrant story about a woman and a daughter who come from a different country, El Salvador, mm-hmm. to migrate to America. And um, once they're here, they stumbled across a lot of, you know, things that immigrants stumble on, which is, you know, needing to work. And then here comes this kind of like lifesaver citizen and kind of alters their lives forever. Um, and, and it's a positive thing, you know, as an immigrant story, I wanted to put a positive light on not everybody it's against them, you know, and I mm-hmm. think it was important for me, especially it was very timely right now. And then I also hired all women and minorities. So for the making of it. So that was also important and to include LGBTQ, you know, community as well. And mm-hmm. so that was really fun. <clears throat> yeah. And, and I really enjoyed it. Fantastic. Fantastic. And I take it that that might have been some of your own story from there as well. Because I know you went you came from El Salvador yourself yeah. at a very young age. Um, yeah. So, yeah. So obviously you've, you've been able to use a lot of your own experiences, I guess, for that film. <laughs> Absolutely. Like the first half of it is completely, you know, autobiographical. Is that how you say it? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. There you go. The first one, the beginning of it is the second part. It's kind of more of a fiction of how I would want it to end. Mm-hmm. But, um, but yeah, you know, I, I did combine a lot of the, you know, true story that I went through as a kid. Yeah. Excellent. Cause I mean, I know that I'm going to take this as I don't normally talk sort of political side but i can imagine how difficult it is to come into somewhere like the united states which is quite historically racist i'm gonna put across there you know and i apologize to people who aren't because there's a you know a lot of people who aren't but obviously it's like the uk the uk's got that sort of feel as well but especially in the state and at the moment present times it's so so i guess at eight years old it must have been quite daunting to suddenly come you know to this whole new country yeah you know El Salvador is a third world country, so it is, you know, it was different, very different. And, um, yeah, you know, I do believe there's a lot of political things going on in the world and, you know, views that people don't agree with and things. But I also truly do believe that there is some good people out there that, you know, want to do right and are good. And I think that's why I wanted to highlight that in the movie as well, because I think, you know, if we only see the negative sides of what's going on and, and those stories and people aren't more receptive to be a good person or want to help. And I think I truly want to believe that not everybody is racist. I truly want to believe that there's mostly good people. It's just that the media just happens to highlight the, the negative things. And so that was that's what was very important for me to do it at this time yeah mm-hmm. definitely no that's really great you are right i think them i think mainly you know i'm not going to say go quote the old fake news <laughs> but, you know, yeah. i think i think that's, that's really really awful yeah. but yeah the, i think there is a lot of media um especially in that area i think the media does hype things up it picks on something that's a small story but then it, it makes it a lot worse and obviously then that brings everybody's mo- emotions and yes yeah, so i think you're right there i think you know <laughs> there are a hell of a lot of good people in the world more good people than there are bad and it, it's it's good like you say to actually um to acknowledge that and to draw from their strength uh you know to to, to be the success that you are which is great <laughs> oh, thank you so much i appreciate that yeah you know i'm really blessed to be here now and you know and i truly <clears throat> believe that you know no matter where you come from, and that's why I named it Made in America, because no matter where you come from, I think you can make yourself in America. Like you can make yourself whatever you want to be, you know, yeah. whether it be an actor, you know, like myself, or whether it be, I don't know, a doctor, a lawyer, or whatever. I think it's possible if you just take the opportunities um, that there is here. And I think um, that's why I think the people that come sees it, a lot of them come from different countries because they realize that there's a lot of opportunity in America if you just take it by the horns you know <laughs> yeah yeah definitely definitely sorry there's a dog barking in my background now <laughs> oh, oh that's so funny well and now we're totally equal <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's why i was suddenly looking a bit vague there it's because i was trying to work out with <laughs> no, it's okay. no 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 you're all right i mean that's a great story to have as well because you are right no matter it's it's how you as a person i think mm-hmm. put things across and you know the, the motivation the dedication that and the hard effort that you do yourself can get you those goals and get you those dreams i mean success isn't something that comes naturally it's something no. that is hard earned um you know so going against those you know coming i say coming from el salvador when you're eight years old and working towards those goals 
did you want to be an actress when you were eight or was it did you have something else in mind <laughs> you know what's crazy is um as a kid I think I always wanted to uh and I would always watch you know like dance videos and Selena as a kid I don't know you know the movie that made J-Lo really yeah. famous and um I always watched those things and I always kind of wanted it but I don't think as a kid I thought I want to be a star or anything like that I think um I always enjoyed singing dancing choir like in high school I did plays I did I did all the free stuff because that's what I could afford you know and my mom couldn't afford to put me in those expensive stuff but um you know I think that it was always in me I just didn't know I really was going to be my career until um I met a woman and I used to do I used to do makeup, so mm-hmm. I started off as a makeup artist. Okay. And she sat in my chair, and I guess a guy had told her that she was a good anchor, but you know she needed to put on more makeup. Pretty much, <laughs> really? I know. And, <laughs> okay. Yeah. And so um, I know his name, but he's really famous. So I won't say it. But, you know, <laughs> yeah. And uh, she sat in my chair, and she said, "Oh, you know this this just happened to me." And she's like, "You know," she's like, "You're really bright." you know, like person, she's like, you should be on TV, not, you know, not, and I was like, really? And so it was weird how sometimes like, just like that, somebody can Mm -hmm. tap back into this place and funny, crazy story. I ran into her not even five days ago, four days ago at a nail salon out of all nail salons in LA. I'm from Sacramento. I grew up there Yeah. and I met her in Sacramento. I hadn't seen her. I didn't talk to her and I ran into her at a nail place and she's like, Oh my gosh. And we talked and she sent me, um, a screenshot mm-hmm. of, cause she writes a, in her journal every day. And I kid you not, it made me cry. Cause in her, in her message that she sent me, you know, what's funny. Maybe I can read it. Um, I mean, these are things that they, 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 they literally can't, you can't fake it. It's yeah. just, it's just crazy how things like that happen. And you just wonder like, how did I run into this lady? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Um, it's just the craziest things. But she was a big impact in my life. Um, and she pretty much tapped back into my life that I, you know, that I could be an actress. And she put me in a new show, in her new show. And I did makeup. And then from there, I knew. Um, and, by the way, um, I got fired from makeup because I called in sick. And I was on her show. So that's oh, wow. kind of what started everything. So I got fired from the store I used to work at. Oh, because my friend, one of the girls saw me um, on TV. And then from there, I packed my bags and moved to L.A. I wanted to see. <laughs> yeah. And didn't look back. I don't think. Yeah. Let me see. Oh, it didn't come up. But dang it. It was in her journal. I won't say it exactly right, maybe. But it literally said, I met this girl today, a makeup counter. It was on the 2014, in August 2014, mm-hmm. and she said she helped me with my makeup. She, there's something about her. She's going to do great in life. Wow. And she sent me that screenshot, and I sat in my car, and I literally cried because literally who knew that 14th, what, that's almost six years ago? Yeah, yeah, about <laughs> Yes, and then here I am yep. talking about a movie, and exactly, I mean, it's so crazy. So it you know, is. Too, oh, you they know. do, they do. That's actually a really sweet thing for her to say as well, and especially you know to write it and show you that she wrote that in the journal. Well. She it's literally, like, wow. to, yeah, she's she's like, I have to show you this, and she goes, I'm not just saying this because I. She's like, what have you been <clears> up to? And I told her, I told her everything that I've been up to, mm-hmm. and she's like, oh my god, I have to show you what I wrote, and then she <laughs> wrote it, and I just sat in my car, and I was just like. Oh my gosh. Out of all the nail shops in LA, yeah. I had to run into her. Exactly, yeah. Day. I mean, there's thousands. There must be thousands of them. <laughs> so it was really great to see. And that's how I think things like that, that you end up realizing, like, you're in the right track. You're, I'm going something yeah. <laughs> right, you know? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Everything happens for a reason. So, yeah, you're obviously yeah. meant, you know, five, nearly five and a half years on, you're, you're meant to, to bump into her again to let her know, by the way, Look at me now. I'm doing this. Isn't that crazy? It is. So, yeah. yeah. That is fantastic. It's nice to hear a story like that as well, because you don't hear many <laughs> things like that, which is great. Uh, and uh, so, I mean, you know, like, I, yeah, carry on. No, no, please carry on. <laughs> no, I was just saying it's, it, it is, it is kind of like a serendipity. 
you know? Yeah. Like, that's, you know, sometimes as an actor, you go up and down, you know? Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you need to be reminded how far you've come. And people like that are like angels in your path yeah. to kind of tell you, you're doing all right, you know? <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it is nice. It is really nice. I actually had something similar, not as good. Um, last week, <laughs> yeah, I wasn't feeling too good with my show. I mean, I've I've been quiet for a while because I mean it's coming to the end of the year, so things quieting down. And my work, yeah. the work I do as a day job, has been absolutely snow. I mean, hence why we've taken so long to get together. Things just keep changing, and it was you know I was starting to think, oh, is it worth carrying on this, that, and the other? And then uh, I, out of the blue, I had um, one of the Facebook actresses I'm friends with. I've not met them, so right. they out of the blue, just messaged me and said. Hi, Chris. I just wanted to let you know I've been listening to some of your shows and watching them, and I think they're absolutely fantastic. You know, it's just saying, I think they're absolutely fantastic. I love your style, brilliant. And it was just, mm-hmm. it was just a nice little out of nowhere. It was just like just just at the moment when I could have, you know, I really needed to hear really something. Needed. Yeah, I, it just it came out of the blue. So it's like, oh, uh-huh. <laughs> so it wasn't as good as yours, but it was. <laughs> well, no, that's great. And the thing is, that's sometimes exactly what you need. Mm-hmm. You know, you just need a reassurance of what you're doing and where you're going is is right. And yeah. we all need it, no matter what level or not, you know. Like, you, we all need it. And I think it's important to be reminded you're on the right track. So Yeah, yeah definitely, definitely. I think mine come through for quite a few, um, not refusals, but declines, should I say. Just like with you as an actress, you know, when you're going through all those auditions, when people see you in one film, there's lots yeah. of lots of auditions where you've really worked hard. And... You you know you to get the audition, but then someone else has just come along, and, and it's that's how yeah. it is. And I yeah, it's the same kind of thing for me with all the work. You know, we're doing the interviews. I reach out to people. I can see them going on other podcasts or the shows, and then they don't even respond to me, or they say no, and I'm just like, <laughs> what yeah, am I doing wrong? Yeah, exactly. So no, I think. It. I'm sorry. You do question yourself. <laughs> and it it happens no matter what. You know, no matter what level, I think, no matter, I don't think, and, and if, they, you know, I have a friend, big mentor of mine, and he said, you know, when I was doing my film, my short film, I, w- I went into some hiccups, you know, it's always finances, right? Mm-hmm. Especially when you're financing your own stuff. Yeah. Um, he said to me, that never stops. Like, I don't care what level, it just never stops. Like, mm-hmm. you know, when you, when you put in your own money, when it's somebody else's money, it doesn't matter it oh the finances are always like a hiccup you know yeah. and he's like don't ever get down on feeling that it's you it's not you it's just that it happens to everybody and so he's you know he would tell me that so that was nice to hear too because sometimes you're like is it just me you know <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that's so. a big struggle especially when you're making your own stuff i mean i talk to a lot of independent filmmakers and independent actors who are making yeah. their own stuff and i you know one thing that really winds me up Sometimes it doesn't really wind me up, but it, it grates yeah. at me. <laughs> you see Hollywood coming yeah. out with rehashes of films over and over oh, and over yeah. again. They're rebooting it one year, then two years later they'll reboot it again. It's like, right, there are literally thousands of people like yourself who yeah. are really good writers and you've got your films out there. Why can't they just pick those up and run with those and new stories and the new ideas Um uh, Sorry, that's just one bugbear I have, especially talking to independent. I feel there's so much talent, which is not, it's being seen and you're getting, you know, you're getting out there, obviously, but the likes of the big Hollywood block, they should just pick that up and nurture mm-hmm. that, I think, a lot more, um, especially I'm on the finance I'm side I'm of things. I'm with you. I'm, I'm right there with you on that. It's like, there's a lot of, urgent, but that's the thing. Sometimes, you know, big, big companies bet on the ones that I, I know, they know for sure are going to make money, not. Yeah, not they, they don't take gambles sometimes. You know, it's very rarely do they do. But oh yeah, when I, mean, they do, I think it pays up. You know, it does. I mean, I even wrote to one of my, my cinema local cinemas and said, "Could you play film shorts before the film starts, the movie starts?" And I thought, because you know, get some of the independent short films out there and where they have all the trailers, just have half an hour like they used to, just have half an hour short film. And yeah, a, <laughs> that literally would be amazing and i think <clears throat> that would help a lot of short storytellers because here's the thing what i'm realizing too people think that it's easy to make short films mm-hmm. it's actually harder because you have to tell a story in this amount of time and yeah. make it impactful you know it's like how 
it, that's really hard. Trust me. I'm like, you know. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. So. And I, yeah, and you're right. And even when you're acting in it, as you're making that film to tell that story, and then when you're acting in it, a lot of it's on you. That really shines, makes you shine as an actor, or not shine, but mostly, you know, because that's focusing on your everything. It's not just how you talk in the thing. You, it's everything visual. You've got to be able to, you know, your eyes, your movements, everything has got to be able to convey that story in that tiny short amount of time. Absolutely. So full respect. <laughs> Exactly. So I, I mean, I'm, I would love. I, obviously, we're submitting it to film festivals. Um, once we do, you can maybe take a look at it. Oh yeah, I'd love to. Yeah, yeah. It's a narrative. So mm-hmm. the first one was a documentary that I did, but this <coughs> one's a narrative. Um, you know, I, I don't like to do the same thing twice. Yeah. Um, you know, so yeah, like I, I like to keep it separate. Oh no, you know? yeah. When it's when it's available for you to to share out of festivals, please let me know, and I will share it out to. Oh, that'd be uh, great. You know what? You should definitely follow our little Instagram. Oh, I, I, do I? No, I don't. I haven't done yet. I will do. Uh, so that one is um, called Made in America Film. Okay. So follow that one, and you can see when you know when it's going to air. What, mm-hmm. what we're doing? We're doing a bunch of press for it right now, and submit it to film festivals, and um, and might air in locally in Atlanta with this TV station there, uh, GSU TV. So, so yeah, I'm, like, I'm just. I'm stoked, so I think it'll be good. It's my and it's weird when you make your own films. It's like your baby. You're like, you just want ever. Do you want to share <laughs> yeah. it? But you're also scared, you know. <laughs> oh yeah. yeah, yeah. I can imagine. I can imagine. When's it gonna When's it gonna be released? Because uh, obviously it's going to the film festivals now, so you go through all those. Uh, so we want to go through. Do you mind giving me one second? One yeah, second. certainly, sure. <laughs> yeah, one second. That's all right. <laughs> yeah. So it's gonna. We're gonna go through the festival run first. Yeah. Um, and then I think that should take maybe like five months maybe a few months because mm-hmm. not all of them are at the same time yeah no. and so, and then afterwards then you know we'll probably if we don't air it on the film festivals it doesn't get accepted then we're going to air it on tv because so, like a, a, a station gsu tv station kind of like um help was behind it which mm-hmm. is a georgia uh georgia state um affiliate and they we a lot of students came on my set and got some like set hours and you know we worked a lot alongside with them fantastic so. did you film it in atlanta then did you yes okay. we shot it all in atlanta all of it Brilliant. it was really great and it was um you know like 99 percent women and then we hired a couple guys and it was really great Excellent. and then they were a lot of them were like grad had already graduated mm-hmm. some were like still in school um you know there was a lot of girls that worked with us that hadn't done a film before by themselves they've always been like assistant to a guy yeah you know like you know we had like a sound op girl we had a you know a griff um yeah gaffer mm-hmm. um and she had always been like an assistant to somebody and yeah. it was her first time being like head you know so Fantastic. That was really, yeah that was really good to give those people and some of them didn't even have imdb credit so we were able to to help them out, <laughs> yeah. Excellent, yeah. excellent. So you've been, yeah, been able to empower a lot of women in film because I think that's something that's coming through a lot stronger. I've noticed in the past few years, which is finally, is that you know there is a huge, the the feet. Well, you've always been there. The women in film have always been there, but now there's been a turn to actually recognise that you know women are equal. So and you know in some cases a lot better at <laughs> making some yeah. films in in, in those Absolutely. areas. And I think so. It's, you know, being able to empower that. And like you say, where, where, where you've had people who've maybe been assistants before and giving them that empowerment to become the lead on that film and give them experience and confidence. Absolutely. And, you know, I, I saw that, um, you know, at the Golden Globes, that, you know, there was like no <coughs> women, no screenwriters at mm-hmm. all that were like nominated or even had an opportunity. And I mean, it's not about just gender, you know, but it's like at least give an opportunity. I mean, not one. Yeah. I'm like, whoa. That was crazy, you know, so it was I'm hoping hopefully it changes. I'm sorry, I was gonna say, yeah, I mean, it think it should be yeah, it's based on talent, which is fine, however, those got yeah, yeah. it's so obvious at the golden Globes because you just look at the you know you look at i m d b and you just see how much talent is there, which is female, and you're thinking why yeah, exactly what you just said, why <laughs> where was it, you know, why aren't yeah. you having this representation because it should be there, right, especially when it's better than a lot of what went through and some of the yeah <laughs> i mean again yeah there were some things that i was like Meh. you know again it's not about gender it's about talent but at least give an opportunity to somebody that did write something really good you know what i mean mm-hmm. 
Yeah. So, um, you know, and it's, you know, it's harder for them to be recognized, but it's all right. You know, I think they'll change and hopefully, oh, yeah. you know, by the time that I'm really doing some major films, a feature film or something, then I'll be up there. So. <laughs> 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 excellent, yeah. excellent. Yeah, yeah, your, your name will be in line. So don't worry. <laughs> ah, you're so sweet. Thank you. <laughs> cool. So, quickly talk about obviously um, your, your latest film that you have done was is a blockbuster. It's um, Boss Level, if I get the name right. Yeah, Boss so, Level. I mean, we uh-huh. briefly mentioned it at the beginning. So, I mean, this is you, as I say, you grew up. So did I. Like watching Mel Gibson and Naomi yeah. Watts. What was it like with those guys? Um, it was great. I, I didn't, I'm so sad I didn't have an actual scene with them, but mm-hmm. I did get to see them on set and, um, you know, they, they were just so cool, like normal, you know, like cool people down to earth. Yeah. It was really great. Mm-hmm. Fantastic. I, I, I got to work a little bit more with Frank Grillo and, yep. um, yeah, he was a good guy too. Like it was just a lot of, a, a lot of hardworking people there for sure. I mean, he's like 50 something yoked out, you know, <laughs> like working out, like doing setups. It was like, whoa, I need to get back in the gym. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Excuse me. I know that. Yeah. I see that when I, when I've gone to, um, I've do some of the, gone down to London with it mixed with the acting friends. And like you say, they're, they've all beefed up for their roles and I'm just sat there like, really? <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah, yeah totally. Sure. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, but it's a great experience. I was saying it's, you know, it's, you've been, even just been on the set of a film that big and with, with that kind of talent that you can just, you know, I feel um, that you can just sit back and actually learn from it. Um, and, see Absolutely. people like that in action where you know they've got those years of experience so you can pick up you can pick up little t- tips or absolutely i mean the, the biggest thing that i think sets our our like school you know like you know people always ask me like how do you how do you learn or how do you do this i'm like by doing and by being there you know no matter what on the set you learn so much whether it's in front or behind the set you just learn everything and i think yeah like you said little tips like you know, I would see Frank, he had a binder of his mm-hmm. script and like, you know, he had like little things highlighted and things. And I just like would watch him. I'm like, oh, wow, that's how you break down a script. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I didn't know how to break down a script before. Mm-hmm. No one taught me. No, there's yeah. no like one on one book, how to break, you know, I just or ones that you actually, you know, if they're real or not, you know, yeah. like you don't yeah. <laughs> tell in a book. But, you know, that was really cool to see in an action for sure. Fantastic, fantastic. That's great. It, yeah. is, it was great to hear. So, you know, I mean, I did. I was about, is it two two years ago now. I was on an independent film over here, and I had a little mm-hmm. speaking role. And I was doing the same. I was just sat back, and they were like, because it was twelve hours, and I had like five. I think I was literally on on about twenty minutes. That was it. That was all my filming out of twelve hours. But they were like, Are "You sure? You you only sitting there bored?" And I was like, big grin on my face, think this is where I need to be. I was like, yeah. This is perfect. I was watching the ca- I was watching everything. How the cameraman works. How the sound was working. Yeah. Then I was watching. They say the acting on stage. How, like exactly how they learned the scripts and cut the scripts and how they would actually yeah. learn their lines. And I was like, oh, okay. So I was, you know, it was a real positive experience just to sit and learn. And uh, absolutely. I absolutely loved it. And I want to do it again. <laughs> yeah, do it. So, yeah. Go chase it. Go do it. Yeah. <laughs> Morgan Freeman, Samuel Jackson. They were in their fifties. I'm I'm still young compared to them. And they were in their fifties when they got into it. <laughs> Acting is a forever deal. Look at Meryl Streep. You know what I oh, mean? Yeah. She's killing it. Like, I think that there's, it's never too late to chase your dreams, you know? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. And on that one, I'm going to say following chasing your dreams. Obviously, that's kind of was fantastic advice. I'm going to, br- oops, it's broke my printer. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't the printer. <laughs> I'm going to say, I've got a signature question. I'm either. Now, okay. I'm going to, sorry, I'm going to have to draw this close, obviously. So this signature question, <clears throat> this one is okay. a totally off-the-wall question. It's got nothing to do with acting. It's, nothing. it's not personal, okay. don't worry. Uh, I, the, sto- okay. the story behind it was about a couple of years ago, I had a ch- chap on my show who was on Star Wars. And he was also a Muppet or a puppeteer for Jim Henson for 35 years now he's been one. He worked on okay. the New Dark Crystal scene, uh, the New Dark Crystal show. So... If you someone asked me the question to ask him, and I thought this is such a cool question, I've got to ask everyone, and I have. So apologies in advance, but if you could have a Muppet created after you and your own personality, what kind of Muppet would it be? What kind of Muppet? Yeah, you can have an original, an existing one, or an original creation. Wow, this is a good question. I've never been asked this question before. Um, I think I would have one. Um, 
I guess like a basic one that with like the hand, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> I don't know, just because I would kind of want people to be more like, I would want somebody to be really funny, okay. like, and then say like funny jokes. Um, not so like probably just so basic that people are like, Oh, that's it. But then like the things that would come out of it would be so like obnoxious. <laughs> and I, I would actually say if I was a Muppet, I would want a Muppet that could say whatever the hell I wanted. Like the most like political views, yeah. um, like whatever, just because no one would know it was me. Mm -hmm. So I would be very incarnito and yep. I would just say whatever I wanted. <laughs> like and then just like be obnoxious and people like just be like what but I would say kind of you know how like Dave Chappelle is and yeah. his, like shows, and he's very like meticulous about his script and like how he brings <clears throat> people back and stuff mm -hmm. so I literally would want to be like a Dave Chappelle Muppet but like just you know the mouth one and just say whatever I want <laughs> that's what be me I don't know that's, a, that's what I think I would want yeah. <laughs> and, like say all the things that people were thinking mm -hmm. But, you know, no one would, would know is me and have like a voice that no one knows it's me. <laughs> <laughs> that, be like, you know, it's Armida yeah. saying whatever the hell she wants. <laughs> <laughs> See, that's actually quite creepy because I've got an idea for to do another show on mine, oh. which is which is a puppet or a creation. And I was going to okay. call him something like Billy Bob. And it was like, hey, man, I'm Billy Bob. And just do that. But they won't notice me. And I was just gonna yep. exactly that. Just be able to go out there and say exactly what I, you know, say what I wanted and do all those. Exactly what you just said. Oh, it's, wow. It's a little thing in my head that was being spinning around thinking, should I, should I ever do one of those as well? <laughs> oh, that's funny. So, yeah, same, yeah, same wavelength. That's pretty cool. But, yeah, no, you're right. Yeah. It, wouldn't it be great, though, if people didn't know who you were, but you could just say, just it say as, whatever <laughs> you wanted and just say, like, the not, most obnoxious things. And then people would be like, or maybe the things that people are thinking, but nowadays it's so hard to say because people get so offended. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you can't say anything anymore, and it's just like it's, you know, it's it's gone. <laughs> That's <laughs> but, the case. I was like, guys, who are you? like who am I? He like mocked the audience. He goes, "I'm you." Like you know, <laughs> have, you, have you watched it? His his show, Dave Chappelle. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, I've the seen new... it uh, not recently, but I've seen him before. Yeah. You need to watch the new one. It's pretty really good. Yeah. He was basically making fun of audiences how he can't say anything anymore because people get offended. Oh, right, okay. I'll have to watch that then, because he's yeah, he, he really is funny. Good. He's brilliant, Dave. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it'll be funnier for you to imagine what he's saying in my Muppet. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> excellent, excellent. Cool, and before I stop recording, Amida, is there anything you would like to say to people who are watching or listening to this? Or who will be watching uh, this? No, thanks so much for supporting little old me, and um, I hope that you get to see my little film, and then also my big film, Boss Level. Um and just, yeah, just keep on keeping on. Chase your dreams. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you very much. I, I Thank you.